Today, we're going to explore one of the best features of DaVinci Resolve Studio. With the new relight function, you can create a three-dimensional map of any video and realistically control lighting in post-production. It's an impressive tool and you'll learn everything you need to know to use it. Once inside the color module of DaVinci Resolve and with the video clip that we want to relight, we need to add two nodes in series to be able to use the effect. To do this, we right-click on the first node, select Add Node, and then Add Serial Node. And we do the same thing again to add a third node in series. Perfect! In the two new nodes we've created, we need to add the relight effect. It's important to note that whenever we want to use this effect, we must apply it into two nodes. We go to the Effects panel, located in the upper right-hand corner, and search for the relight effect. Once we've found the effect, we apply it to the two nodes we've created, in node 02 and now in node 03. Perfect! Finally, we must correctly connect the three nodes. We place the nodes in this way to make it easier to connect them. We connect node 01 to node 03, and then connect node 02 to the second green arrow of node 03. In this way, we would already have all the nodes connected to be able to use the relight effect. Okay, now we can start with the effect. This is very important. In node two, we must make sure to activate the output surface map option. If we don't activate this option, the effect will not work correctly. And now in node zero three, in the surface map section, we must change the mode to use input two. Node zero three will be the node where we change and configure all the light settings. We select node three, and now, if we move this icon in the viewer, we see a 3D preview of how the lighting will affect our video. Being able to control lighting in such a realistic way in editing is incredible. In case the effect controls don't appear, that is, this icon of the circle connected to the icon of the light source, it's because you don't have the OpenFX overlay enabled in the viewer. As you can see, if I deactivate it, the icon no longer appears in the viewer. So make sure to have the OpenFX overlay enabled. Great, now I'm going to explain the three different types of light we can use for this effect. Directional light, point source, and spotlight. This icon with the red stripes always indicates the source of light. Since we've selected the directional light mode, the light will come from the icon with the red stripes towards the center of the screen. As you can see, if I move the icon around the person, the lighting will change depending on the direction in which the light icon is facing. For example, if I place the icon above the person, it will illuminate the entire top of the person and the table, while the lower parts will be in shadow. If we illuminate from the left side, we can see that we have a completely different lighting. The farther away the light icon is, the less powerful the light will be. As we bring the light source closer to the center of the screen, the scene will become more illuminated. In this other scene, we can see how shadows appear or different areas are illuminated depending on where the light comes from. Secondly, we have the lighting mode point source. In this mode, we can illuminate the elements close to the light source. As you can see, the area close to the light source is being illuminated. In addition, if we move the circle icon up or down, we can change the distance and range of the light. Finally, we have the lighting mode Spotlight. As the name suggests, the lighting will be similar to that of a spotlight or flashlight in the scene. In the effect controls, we can adjust the range of the spotlight, move the light source, and also adjust its position on the Z-axis. Perfect! We now see the different lighting modes. In this example, I'm going to use the point source mode. The first step is to place the light in the area that we want to illuminate. I'm going to put the light near the person's face, which is the area that I want to be more illuminated. In the light properties section, we can adjust the brightness and reach of the light in a much more precise way. We also have the option to adjust the contrast, which I recommend modifying. If we decrease its value, the illuminated areas will be more differentiated from the shadowed areas. While if we increase it, the difference between them will be smaller and the lighting will be more uniform. 
Personally, I prefer there to be greater contrast in the lighting, so I'm going to decrease the value. In the Surface Properties section, I only recommend adjusting the glossiness and specularity if we're lighting plastic objects, liquid surfaces, or similar elements. For example, if I increase the glossiness, the way that light interacts with the surface makes it look like the person is made of plastic. Finally, the shadow softness adjustment is used to create a gradual and smooth transition between light and shadow. In the light position adjustment, we can modify the position of the light in the X, Y, and Z axis. But we can do the same thing from the controls that appear in our viewer. Perfect. Once we've finished placing and configuring our lighting, we can disable the relighting map preview. By disabling it, we can now see our original video again. As I mentioned earlier, in Node 3, we need to configure all the parameters and add the final lighting. To add the lighting, we can go to the Curves or Colors Wheels menu, and in the Colors Wheels panel, increase the Gamma or Gain. In my case, I'm going to increase both. I'm increasing Midtones in Gamma and Highlights in Gain to achieve the lighting I want in this scene. And now, we have the lighting applied with re-illumination effects in our video, meaning we have 3D lighting. You can always re-enable the option Relight Map Preview to see more clearly how the re-illumination is affecting your scene. Great, let's see the before and after. This time, I've illuminated the person quite a bit, but if you want, you can make a much more discreet lighting. A lighting that I think could be perfect for this video is directional lighting. Let's try this lighting mode. What I want to achieve now is for the light to come directionally from these neon lights on the wall. To do this, I'm going to place the light source from the same direction as the wall lights. Perfect. Now it illuminates this whole area. With the re-light effect, we can not only modify the lift, gamma, and gain values, we can modify any value. For example, we can change the color of the light. I'm going to make the highlights have a bluish color, similar to that of the lights on the wall. I'm also going to modify the color of the offset and gamma settings, looking for a bluish tone. What I want is for the re-lighting on the jacket and the person's face to be blue, to match the atmosphere of this video and look realistic. Great, let's see the before and after. There is a big change. Maybe we could lower the highlights a bit, but I think it looks good overall. Finally, I'd like to show you an additional trick for lighting specific areas in your images. For example, suppose we only want to illuminate the face and not the jacket. In this case, we can go to the window panel and add a mask. I'm going to add a circular mask. I place this mask in the area where I want the lighting effect. Adjust the mask to cover only the area of the face and hand, avoiding the jacket. Great, now we would have 3D relighting only in a specific area. Another very useful option is to combine the relight effect with the magic mask effect. This way, we can achieve much more precise lighting. If you're interested in learning how to use magic mask, in the description of this video, I will leave a link to a complete magic mask tutorial. I hope this video has helped you and that you can now utilize the relighting function. As always, I'll leave the link for the free DaVinci Resolve course here in case you want to learn many more effects. That's all for today. See you in the next video.